Today I'm going to be showing you how I set up Octoprint for my 3D printer along with everything you need so that you can do this, this, and this. For those of you who don't know what Octoprint is, it's a software that lets you control and monitor your 3D printer remotely. It works by connecting your printer to a small computer like a Raspberry Pi, which you can then access from any device like a phone or a computer. With Octoprint, you can start, stop, and monitor your prints without having to be directly next to it. And if you buy an external camera, you can watch the progress and create time lapses. It's super helpful and can be one of the most useful upgrades you get for your 3D printer. All right, now that we understand what Octoprint is, I'm gonna go over everything I ordered and everything you'll need to set up Octoprint for yourself. The most important thing you're gonna need is a Raspberry Pi. This will run Octoprint and manage all your connections to your 3D printer. I personally got a Raspberry Pi 4. You can get other Pis, but I don't re recommend anything older than a Pi 3. To go along with the Pi, you're also gonna need a micro SD card. I don't recommend getting anything less than a 16 gigabyte card. We'll also need a power supply to keep the Pi running. I bought one that met the specifications of my Pi 4. It might be tempting to use a phone charger, but I don't recommend that because it's not very safe. I also bought mine with a switch so that I can power off the Pi safely. Of course, we'll also need a cable to connect your 3D printer to the Pi. Most 3D printers are USB type B, which looks like this. Me personally, my 3D printer has a micro USB port. But either way, one side of your cable needs to be USB type A to connect to the Pi. This cable must also be able to transfer data, not just power. One thing you might want to get is a power blocking adapter. This prevents the Raspberry Pi from back powering your 3D printer. This doesn't happen for everybody, but if you notice your printer being powered even when it's turned off, this is a cheap solution without messing with any electronics. You can also cut the power wire in the cable, but that's a lot more work. Lastly, I bought a Logitech 1080p Pro webcam to stream and make time lapses of my prints. You could also use a lot of other cameras like a Raspberry Pi camera module, a DSLR, or a GoPro. But the webcam like the one I bought easily plugs into the board and is cheaper than a lot of the other options. Here are some other things you'll need. A computer or laptop, a micro SD card reader, and a 3D printer. My 3D printer is a Creality CR10 V2. All the links to all the products I used in this video are down in the description. With all the parts gathered, it's time to put everything together. Let's go step by step through the setup process so we can get Octoprint set up on your 3D printer. To set up Octopi on your Raspberry Pi, start by opening the Raspberry Pi Imager on your computer. First click Choose OS. Scroll down to Other Specific Purpose OS and select 3D Printer. From there choose Octopi and select the stable version. Next click Choose Storage and select your micro SD from the list of available drives. Once you've done that, click Next to access the settings menu. Here, you'll need to enter a username and password for your Octopi setup. Make sure to check the box for Configure Wireless LAN. Then, input your Wi-Fi's SSID and password. Don't forget to select your Wi-Fi country from the drop-down menu before clicking Save to confirm your settings. When you're back on the main page, click Next. You'll see a warning reminding you that all data on the SD card will be erased. If you're ready to proceed, click yes. The Raspberry Pi imager will now write Octopi to your SD card, a process that will take a few minutes. Once the operation is complete, a confirmation message will appear. Finally, click continue, eject the SD card from your computer, and you're all set to set up Octoprint with your Raspberry Pi. Start by inserting your SD card into your Pi. Once that's done, plug in everything. Connect your Pi to a power supply, plug your printer into one of the USB ports, and if you have one, include your power blocking adapter. If you're using a webcam, you can also connect it to another USB port. Finally, flip the power supply if your setup has one, and let the Pi boot up. After a moment, head back to your computer and open your browser. Type octopi.local into the address bar and press enter. It might take a little time to load, but once it does, you should see the Octoprint setup screen. If you have an Octoprint backup, this is where you would upload it. If you don't have a backup, which is likely if you're watching this video, 
Just skip this step and click Next. Next, enter the username and password we created earlier, then click Next again. On the connectivity check screen, change the host IP to 8.8.8.8 .8 and check the connectivity. If it doesn't work, try disabling and re-enabling the connectivity check. Once it works, click Next. I personally choose to disable anonymous usage tracking, but this is optional. Make your choice and click Next. The following screen introducing, introduces a setting that automatically disables problematic plugin versions using a blacklist. I recommend enabling this feature to prevent issues with your 3D printer. Click Next. If you have a webcam plugged in, you can click Test to verify that it's connected. Once that's done, click Next to proceed. Now we need to set up your printer's profile. Start by giving your printer a name. Enter any information about your printer that you have, focusing especially on the print bed and the volume dimensions. Also, ensure the nozzle diameter is correct. When you're done, click Next. The final screen provides some additional information. You can read through it if you want, but I'm just going to check off the boxes and click Finish. Finally, give the system some time to finish setting up, then reload your page. Your Octoprint setup is now complete. Now let me show you how to install any plugin you want, such as the UI Customizer, which allows you to enable features like Dark Mode. Start by clicking the wrench icon to open the Settings menu. From there, navigate to Plugin Manager and click Get More. You can either enter a plugin URL directly or use the search bar to find popular plugins. For example, to find the UI Customizer, simply type UI in the search bar. Once it appears in the results, click Install. After the installation is complete, you'll be prompted to restart Octoprint. Let it restart, and when it's back up, it will prompt you to reload the page. Once the page reloads, the plugin should be installed. You might notice some changes, such as elements being rearranged, but dark mode won't be enabled yet. Next, I'll show you how to configure the plugin settings to customize it further. To edit plugin settings, click the wrench icon to open the settings menu again. Under the plugin section, find the plugin you want to configure. Once selected, you'll see a variety of options to modify its settings. For example, to enable dark mode, navigate to themes, Choose the theme you like best, click Select, and then click Save to apply the changes. The interface will update with your selected theme. Now that you know how to install and customize plugins, I'll walk you through Octoprint's basic features and highlight the plugins that can enhance those features and add more. One of the standout features of this setup is the ability to upload and start prints remotely. All you need to do is upload the G-code file and it will appear in your print queue. From there, you can start the print with a simple click, just as if you were standing right in front of the printer. This functionality is invaluable, especially when paired with the ability to pause or stop a print at any time. If a print starts to fail, you can stop it immediately. And as I'll show you later with the help of plugins, we can not only control prints when connected to Wi-Fi, but also from miles away. You can also monitor print details like temperatures. You're not limited to just viewing them. You can also adjust temperatures mid-print if an issue arises. There's also the GCO terminal, which while I haven't used it extensively, it's a powerful tool for troubleshooting by letting you view and input GCO commands directly. Another feature I find incredibly useful is the G-Code viewer. This tool displays the precise path and progress of each print layer, offering valuable insights into the print status. Similarly, the control feature is a must-have, allowing you to move the printer head with simple button commands. But by far my favorite feature is the ability to add a webcam. Including a webcam, or any other camera, is essential if you're planning to integrate Octoprint with your printer. It allows you to visually monitor your prints in real time, adding an extra layer of convenience and peace of mind. Finally, all these features can be enhanced with plugins that extend the system's functionality even further. So I'm going to go over the plugins I have and what they do. The bed visualizer does exactly what it sounds like. It allows you to visualize your bed and find where it's on level. You press update mesh now and it will move around the whole bed testing its height and it will generate this model to view it. This will only work if your printer has something like a BL touch sensor. Cancel objects allows you to do just as it sounds, cancel objects. If you're printing multiple components in the same print and one begins to fail, 
you can go and cancel it, and it will continue to print while skipping that cancel component. Dashboard is a plugin that allows you to more cleanly view stats on the print, like temperature, fan speed, and CPU usage. File Manager is for when you accumulate a bunch of files that you have uploaded to be printed. Normally, you would have to click Delete individually for each file. With File Manager, it allows you to select multiple or all the files to delete them all with one click. Firmware Updater gives you the ability to update your printer's firmware remotely without having to plug directly into your printer. Print Time Genius creates more accurate info on how long your print is going to take. It becomes more accurate as it gathers more data from its previous prints. Anything with the star next to it is the enhanced time. Slicer Thumbnails creates thumbnails of your print from your slicer so that you can view which print you chose. It makes it so much easier to distinguish which print is which. Time Lapse Purger just deletes your time lapses after a custom amount of time. I personally choose one week. Now for my three favorites. My third favorite is UI Customizer. I showed you how to use UI Customizer to change Octoprint's theme, but it also cleans up the UI as a whole. You can also control where everything is on the main page and how big you want it to make them. At number two, I have Obico, which is the plugin I use to view and control my printer from places beyond my house. It works great and it's free, but I would not trust the free AI failure detection feature. I've had multiple failures and it hasn't really done anything. But for free access to everything it offers, it's an essential. And number one is Octolabs. Now it might not be your number one, which if you don't make YouTube videos or share your prints, I understand that. But I got started in this whole project because I wanted to make the cool time lapses I'd been seeing people make online. It's a little bit of work with editing your camera and print settings to perfect the time lapses. I'm still working out some of the stringing problems on mine. And if you want high quality prints, I recommend not to have the time lapse on. But I think these time lapses will be a great addition to my future YouTube videos. I'm not sure if you were able to tell what was being made in these example time lapses. If you didn't, I'll tell you that they are an adjustable tripod for my webcam and a case for my Raspberry Pi. Both of these designs are on Thingiverse and linked in the description. The webcam tripod I designed from scratch and has two different base designs with a weighted and unweighted version. I personally filled my weighted version with lead beads. Now the case I did find on Thingiverse, but it didn't work for my Pi 4. So I modified it and I have a link to the original model as well below. That is everything you need to know about Octoprint and its features. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try to get back to every single one. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope to be coming out with more soon.